Hi, my name's Dave. I'm a handover guy at Adelaide RV. We're standing in our handover shed and Tom and I are going to go through this lovely little gold stream. Um, bit of a generic handover, so if you haven't had a van before, we can give you a bit of an idea what's going on. We'll talk about some specific things, some generic things, but it's a good hands-on approach when you pick up your caravan. It's a service we offer. Um, we're going to start at the front, as we traditionally do, so you get familiar with your hitches and your hookup. On this one, we've got a DO35, which a lot of people are familiar with nowadays. It's very easy to hook up. You can line it up through the hole. You put it on, you push the button. It's that easy. Then you fit the cap on. The cap will not fit on if you haven't locked it on. To get it off, you push the button down, slide that back, and then you wind it off like you normally would, up and down. Um, they're a lot more of a positive lock, so you get less jiggle as you're driving along, and they're fully articulated, so you get a lot of off-road action with it. Um, always make sure when you take your van off, put your handbrake on. If you're on any sort of slope, chock your wheels. They're never as good as what you think they are, so just put a chock in, it makes life easier. On this van, they've decided to have a seven pin flat, an Anderson plug and an Anderson plug. The seven pin flat quite often is a 12 pin, of which the little ones will still do all your indicators, your brake lights, your tail lights, things like that. The big pins on a 12 will trigger your fridge or potentially charge your battery depending on the brand of caravan. In this case, they've decided they want the fridge to run through an Anderson plug when they're driving, um, which if you talk to your 12 volt electrician, can be a great idea for the sort of trip and the sort of car you've got. But make sure your connections are good. Make sure that any of the pins match up, especially on a 12 pin, because different vans may not connect to the same car and run the fridge, but the indicators will still work. They've also opted for a camera, which you'll plug in there. Um, there's different connections for that as well, so you've got to make sure it's going to suit your car. The height of this is also important on the ground on your car. Different cars are different heights, different vans are different heights. So spend a bit of time getting all of this right. Make sure your chains, when you hook up, you hook up to your car. And if you're not, use the hooks that are provided, keep them off the dirt. Other than that, on the front, take your jockey wheel off for travel and put it back on, obviously, when you get somewhere. So it's always jockey on, off, handbrake, hitch, chains, plugs. There's a bit going on, but it's an easy sequence to remember and it takes a couple of minutes, saves you forgetting stuff. What we've also got on the front of the Goldie is a stone guard. Now they're designed to stop the stones bouncing back into your car. It doesn't need to protect that, it's built like a, a tank, it's gonna last forever, but the stone guards can degrade depending on the rocks you're pounding into it. Try not to have them too straight, always have them on a bit of a lean forward. This model, the spare's on the front. Important to keep an eye on the pressure in the spare, not just by doing that. Get your tyre gauge out when you're doing the other ones, make sure it's not got a hole in it. Your gas bottles, these are the new style. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy on the thread. So if the bottle doesn't have something attached, it won't leak. So you can't just do that to check anymore like we used to in the caravan parks. We're gonna leave that open now because when we play inside, we need the gas on. For travel, turn it off. So there is a little routine of things you wanna do at the front when you're hooking up or unhooking. And when we do the handover with you, we go through it at length to make sure you know where you're at. Now, assuming that we've unhitched properly, this is commonly known as the utility side of your caravan. We'll assume that the driver is going to come down and do most of this stuff because it's either plugging in your 15 amp power cord and you've got your circuit breaker on the outside. Um, it has to be a 15 amp, not a 10 amp. Important for you to know the difference. On this van as we go down the side, it's important for you to know where your VIN plate is. It's not vitally important on a daily basis, but you need to know what the numbers mean and make sure you're not overloading your van. And if somebody needs to know where it is, you need to point it out. On this van in particular, we've got an external TV port in. Keep it clean, because these guys haven't got a TV roof antenna. Um, we've got the battery stored down here, and there's an external Anderson plug on it, which is a good idea. So you can hook up a little compressor, for example, or potentially portable solar panels. This model's also got a sail track up top, so you can put in extra shade out on this side protect your canoes, your push bikes, your car, whatever you've got over here, you can make more shade. As we go down the back, assuming we've plugged our power cord in because we're at a caravan park, if you're free camping, of course you can't, this is where you'd hook your mains water up, you unscrew the little inner, and you screw on something like that. 
because then you can connect your hose to it and it's not going to pull it down from horizontal, it'll screw in upside down. That's your mains pressure in the caravan. We'll talk about that a bit more inside, about your pump, whether it's on or off. These are your tank fillers. You take them both out, you pop the hose in, you fill up your water tanks if you're going free camping. Some people use it as ballast low on their van, because if their van's set up nice and high, it'll stop it rocking around a bit more on the road. Other people will travel with them empty, because it's potentially 200 kilos, they're not dragging down the road. The choice is yours. What we've also got down the bottom here is a jacking point. Depending on the suspension on your caravan, you should be using that, or you can put it directly on the suspension if it's an independent style suspension. Um, when you do your handover collection, they should advise you and show you that the jack you're getting with it. These are your fridge vents. It's important to keep them clean. Um, the little creepy crawlies have a tendency to get in there when you're not using them, and it's a fairly straightforward process of popping them off, cleaning it out. Um, again, we'll show you how to do that on your particular van. The gas exhaust will get reasonably hot when it runs on gas, like hot, hot. So don't hang your tea towels on it. The other part of your water supply, you've got your grey water tank or your grey water outlet under the back. They're generally on the back end. At a caravan park, you'll hook your hose up and feed it off wherever they want you to. If you've got your grey tank, you might have it shut because you're in a national park and then it's just catching all your water from your hand basins and your showers and stuff like that. On this one, we've got an on-demand gas hot water system. It's highly unlikely you'll spend a lot of time in the mechanical end of it. There is a little switch that is your 12 volt igniter switch. If it's off, it's never gonna light. If your gas is off, it won't light, and if you've got no water, it won't light. The only time you really get in here is if you see the cobwebs forming in because you haven't used your van for a while. But other than that, leave it shut, leave it on, because when you turn off your 12 volt system, it turns it off anyway. Um, but the on-demand system, the only downfall is you might go through your water a bit quicker because you'll stand in the shower for half an hour washing your hair or your beard or shaving your legs, whatever you're up to. Um, but it's something to consider when you're choosing a van. It's also important to know when you get your van what system you've got and how it works. The last little thing on this side is more of a general use item, not when you're setting up camp, and it's your toilet. They are a cassette. Every bit of thing you put through the toilet ends up in here. To get it out, it was just that little orange lever. And then that becomes your drag handle so you can walk it elegantly through the caravan park. When you get to where they'd like you to empty it, unscrew that, push the little button, lets a bit of air in so it pours out nice and easy. The tip on these is don't shake them too violently. There's a little magnetic float in there. And when you're off emptying it, leave the door open. If Tom was to open the toilet now inside, he's going to go straight into the cavity here, and if the door's open, he'll see daylight and potentially rethink his options. If that's shut, he'll just think it's dark and ready for him, and I come back with this and we've got a mess. So leave that panel open if there's no cassette in. Make sure it locks in. If it feels too heavy to get out, knock on the wall, because somebody might be sitting on your toilet, because if it's open, it locks it in. Generally being the utility side, You've plugged in your power, you've plugged in your water, you're ready to go inside and get some fun going on. Things like this is just a radio antenna, I wouldn't worry too much about them. They might be in a different spot on a different van. Um, and as we come around the back now, so on the back of this van, we've got a rear camera. You can manually adjust what you're looking at. Um, again, there's different models and different options out there. This is a wired up system and there's a little microphone in there. So I can stand here and go left, right, at whoever the driver is. Um, they've gone for jerry cans on the back. Always know what your weight is that you're allowed to put on the back. The other thing on the back is don't impact these or where your license goes. You get a bit of trouble if you start blocking that stuff out and the cops pull you over. On this side of the van, generally the fun side, um, there'll be different options. Some will have a picnic table, some won't. Most will have a power option. These will always be 12 volt. These will always be 240. So you've got to be plugged in to use that in most cases. A lot of vans these days have an inverter, in which case that'll work. What you put in either your tunnel boot or your storage box in this case is up to you. It might help with your balance, but make sure you look for your jack. Make sure you look for things like your awning hook so you know where they are. Um, Stabiliser leg handles. There might also be a gas bayonet tucked in under here. Makes it easier to do your cooking and your barbecuing and stuff like that. The lights for these, the switches are actually inside. We'll talk about some of the tips and tricks with that. 
Um, and the only other thing really to worry about on the outside is a lot of the locks have different keys. So you've got to get familiar with which key does which lock because it is fairly important to lock it for travel. Again, we've got a jacking point on this side, but it's independent, so you'd put it on the suspension. The stabiliser legs we'll talk about later, because I don't think they're as vital as people used to think they were. We're going to be jumping around in the back of this van, and it's not going to move too far. So I don't worry about putting legs down a lot, I do it afterwards. What we're going to cut to now is putting the roof up, because it is a pop top, um, and we'll show you a little trick to make it a bit easier for yourself. Let's assume that we're all cruising along, we've taken it off the car, we've plugged in, we're doing that, it's time to get the roof up. You've got to undo these four clips, one on each corner, and you just pull them down, make sure they flip out the way. Because you've got an awning attached to your roof, you've got to flick it to open. If you don't, you're going to push up and it's not going to unwind. Down on your awning arm, and this is a little trick to make life easy for yourself, unlatch the awning arm, loosen off your thumb screw, do it on the front edge as well, and then pull your awning out a bit, about as high as your roof is, and then close it up again. That's already unwound, I'm just pushing the roof up. So just clip it back in. Don't have to worry about doing it up because we're going to pop the awning out in a minute. Clip your door open and we'll go into your door a bit later. And now it's time to push up the roof. So popping your roof up, it's generally better to do it from the middle of the roof. Otherwise, things get out of square. Grab either the front or the back and push it up. If it feels too hard, you might have forgotten to undo something. I like doing it from the bed because it's easier. And then down the back, you push up the back. Your roof's now locked up. We've got a lot more space in here. What we cheated with doing was turning the lights on, which you don't have to do, of course. And if we went outside now, we'd notice the awning's ready to roll out and have some fun out there. But getting to this stage can be reasonably quick and easy, and you want to get practiced at it so you look like you're good. On this model, we've got the Cruise Master airbag suspension. That's not a bad idea because you can change your ride height. Um, we can have it nice and low if you're struggling to get in and out because you've had a big weekend, or you can let it down low to get it in your driveway into your carport. And then when you're trying to travel down the road, you can change your pressures. And it's a bit hard to see on the video, but we're changing the height of the van substantially. We've come up an extra 10 PSI. We've probably come up an inch and a half in the van. Letting them down is also somewhat easy. You let them down. The thing you may be able to hear in the background is the compressor working. You do that at six o'clock in the morning at the caravan park, you're going to lose friends pretty quickly. But keep an eye on your pressures. Turn it off when you don't want to use it. You do get a hose fitting for this, so you can use the onboard compressor to check your tyres, blow them up if you get a flat and do all that sort of fun stuff, or blow up an airbed. Um, Different models have them in different spots. So again, it's a familiarity of your caravan. Most of them will have a little door handle. This one's gone the full Milenko door. The outside principle is much the same. You always use the key to lock or unlock. It makes that handle disappear and go flat. And then when it's unlocked, it comes out. If somebody tries to force that handle, they break the little bit of plastic and not your van lock. The difference on this one is splitting your door. On a traditional van, it's handle up. On this one, it's the bottom lever and then the bottom lever, because it's that door you're locking anyway, and this has got the good security mesh on it. And you've still got the normal hook to pin your door open. So again, it's a bit of a familiarity thing. Just to exactly the door you get on your van. If you've had it apart, when you click it back, make sure it connects. Now we're going to jump on the inside and have a bit of fun in there. So this is when we put our technical hat on, not our fun hat. Now, under the bed is where we've got the battery management system in this van. They're different to a battery charging system because you might have a 240 volt charger and a solar regulator and then a DC, DC, all sorts of bits and pieces. These days, they're all going into the one unit which controls all your power coming into the van. The BM Pro battery management system is ready to rock and roll. You leave it alone, as long as it's plugged in. That talks to your Odyssey link. Your Odyssey link then talks to your control panel. We'll come into that. This has also got a DC-DC on it, so it gets a better battery, uh, battery charge from your car. You'll also find this is where the compressor's in. So it's important on your van to know where all these things are. This unit's the aircon, which is running a treat, blowing out of my legs and I'm loving it. It's a good idea when you pick up your van to know which circuit does which and any fuses they've involved. 
because this will have a fuse in one of those for your um, your breakaway cord, one for your radio, one for your Dexter stability control potentially, um, and have a look and see what size fuse it is in case you need spares. Generally speaking, the newer vans, you rarely pop anything because they're designed not to. Because it's under your bed, you don't really need to play with it a lot because what it does is it talks to this screen up here next to your fridge. So the bed will be down most of the time unless you've got stuff under there. Now, the battery management under the bed talks to the track monitor here. The top button turns off your 12 volt power. Magic of television, we've got a bit of light still. When you jump in your van, you'll need to turn that on if you want your lights, your radio, stuff like that to work. Your fridge is independent in a Goldie. The bottom button over here turns on your water pump, which you want it off when you travel, on if you're going to use your tank water. What it shows me on the screen is over here on the left, it shows how much water you've got in your tanks. Fresh, fresh, and if you've got your grey tank. It'll show me on the right what's in your battery and what voltage it's holding. Um, the time is not so much of an important thing. Um, and the middle two here is just to brighten up the screen again. Part of the beauty of the BM Pro system is you can put all this on your phone and do it on an app, which I haven't got my phone in my pocket. But you can turn off lights, do your power, do your pump, all from your phone, and see the same sort of information. Saves you looking at that, you can do it from outside. The other box we've got here is your hot water unit. So the little red light indicates that it's got power. So that little switch your outside's on. If I was to run your hot tap now, we'll see that light up. So the magic of TV will just run the hot tap. So as we get a water flow, you'll see that it's got water flow. Then over here, we'll see a little gas symbol light up to say that it's lit on gas. It reads the temperature at the hot water unit, which is at the back. So there's a little time lag between the back and the temperature at the tap. 47, 48. If I back the pressure off, it'll get a little bit higher, especially on cold days. But being an on-demand hot water system, that's all you gotta do. You don't have to prime a tank, you just gotta run the tap and then wait for the hot water to get from the unit to your faucet. It'll now turn itself off. It's that easy on this model. Piece of cake. So this Goldie that we've jumped into, a little bit different than the one we shot. It's got the wine guard antenna on the roof. It does have the up downs marked on there. So when you want to wind it up, you wind it up. It'll stop after 13 or so turns. Don't pull it apart like a chicken leg, they're plastic. Once it's up though, you can pull this collar down to spin it around and fine tune your picture. If you have a sneaky look at the caravan park, they're all facing the same way and it's not by accident. It's that and that. When you pack up though, you want to line these two up so that when I wind it down now, it's going to lay down over here. I always offset it a bit when I've set it up, so I know from here that antenna's up. Wind it up, put the peaks on, wind it down again. It's the sort of thing that you always want to check before you leave that it's come down, and it's not a bad idea with this model to grab a little Allen key that fits that. It's either a two or a two and a half mil in case the handle falls off in transit when you're bouncing down the unit out of track you can put it all back together before you want to wind it up and watch TV. You're not hunting for an Allen key. The other thing to remember is where the power comes through to it, there's a little button that powers up the digital receiver up here. If that's off, you're not going to get any picture. So find out where your socket and your antenna comes in, make sure the light's on, otherwise it's not going to work for you. The first Goldie didn't have an antenna. This one's got the wine guard. They've now got one called a cowfish. It's the big black bucket you've probably seen traveling around. You don't have to do anything. It, the magic of TV, it's already in there. There's no wind up, no wind down, no pack down. It just lives in the bucket. You tune your TV in, you get there, and it's some one less thing to remember. This model's got the Thetford automatic three-way fridge in it. Some people go compressor fridges these days. There's arguments for and against. We'll talk about that later. Um, the important thing with this is there's a tiny little LED here that says it's on. If it's on red, there's a problem. If I tap that button, it tells me that we're on automatic, we're on power, and we're on four-fifths of cold. I can also set the auto defrost on it. I can change the temperature once that screen's lit up. I can also tell it to come off automatic and do different things. So I can tell it to light on gas if I wanted to. What I can't do is tell it to go to battery because the car's not attached. It's not going to work on battery unless the car's attached. Leave it on automatic. Goldstream also give you a switch that turns off the 240 volt element to your fridge. So what it's done now is it's made out that we've lost power to the van. It's gone to gas by itself. 
So if you're at a caravan park and some kid's kicked out your cord, your fridge and your beer's looking after itself, your bacon's not going funky. If you come into your van and realise the microwave's off, you check your fridge and go, yeah, that's on gas too, trace your power cord and turn it all back on, it goes back to power. So it's a good safety initiative and it means that you don't have to mess with your fridge when you get there and click buttons and look for flames to be alight. The little lever there and there is how you open your fridge and your freezer. And trust me, I've got nice cold air coming out of there. There is also a travel lock down on the bottom, which ridiculously they paint black, which if you shut the door, you can spin that across and physically lock the door shut so there's no chance of it coming open in travel. If you're in the habit of using it, make sure that you've used it because otherwise you'll reef on the door and you'll hear plastic go and do a fingernail. Being an automatic fridge, we sell this to everybody when they pick up their van, either it's automatic or compressor fridge, check your fridge before you lock your door. Because if you're traveling, your fridge is gonna be on battery, you lock the door, you drive off. You're putting it in storage for a while, you check your fridge, yes, I've turned it off, there's no bait or bacon in there, you lock your door and you know that your fridge isn't working. So it's just a little thing, check your fridge, lock the door. Easy peasy. The rest of the things in here generally are just appliances. It's the fridge that freaks people out, it can be the hot water or the battery management system, which was trial while we group them together. Things like your stove, there's different things about your stoves. Most are gas, most have a safety cut out in the lid. You've got to have lids up to turn gas on. Microwaves, they are microwaves. Just make sure you don't drive off and leave that plate rattling around because that'll bang and crash and turn into broken glass. So wrap it up in a tea towel before you drive off. Things like your radio, get familiar with it because you have inside outside speakers. You want to be able to know how to tune it in reasonably quickly. If you're trying to catch the cricket scores or keep up with the tunes or whatever you've got going on. Again, different stereos, different radios in different vans. At handover time, we go through them in detail so we know you know how to tune them and change your volume settings. Everything else really in here, it is just an appliance. We will talk about the bathroom though because there's lots of fun things in there. The other thing to look for in a gold stream is under the sink area, they have tap isolators. So you can turn off your front and back tank and only draw from one or the other. Again, it's important to find these things because different vans have them in different spots. Some vans don't have them at all. TV brackets, lights, again, they're all slightly different to each other. Um, but we'll get Tom back in and we'll talk about the bathroom. Now, in your shower, which might be on this side or that side, it's important to leave the plug in the shower unless you're having a shower. It'll stop any flies and bugs getting back in or dust. Um, and if you're having a shower, you flick it out with your toe. The other thing to do is take that off of its cradle if you know you're going on a bouncy road because they can jump off, being right in the back of your van. You lay it on the floor in a sock. Any water in your hose mops your floor, saves you a job. Um, but yeah, the plug in stops the flies getting in. Make sure you lock that for travel so it doesn't bounce around. All right, so your toilet's reasonably standard, um, lit up to use it, obviously. The grey lever here, slide it across, that opens the cassette. If you see daylight, don't use it, because somebody's off emptying your cassette for you. Once it's open, do what you've got to do. The button on top is flush. It'll flush either out of your tanks or off mains pressure, and it only flushes when you hold the button down, so it doesn't dump a whole volume of water. Close it off when you're not using it, stops the vapours and slashback. There's a little cassette symbol on here that'll light up when it's full. If you've shaken your cassette around violently, it may not indicate quite as well as you like. Keep it clean like you normally do a toilet. You'll have no dramas with it at all. Use the chemicals. Breaks everything down nice and easy. Keep your toilet paper on here because it doesn't roll off onto the ground if it's in the shelf. And that's about all you really need to know about in your bathroom other than where your light switches are and where you've kept your toilet paper. So the Finch underbed aircon saves room on your roof, lose a bit of bed storage space, but hey, um, compromise is key. You can either do it from the control panel, if that's your lucky side of the bed, or you use the remote and point at the control panel to change its settings. The number here it shows you is the temperature in the room. You tap up or down, we're trying to make it 18 and cold, fan on flat out. It sucks air from underneath the van, so if the ground's hot outside, the first bit of air is going to be hot, minimise your fan speed. And then as it starts cooling down, speed it up again. If that red light's on red, you're on heater mode. So you're not going to get too much cool air. And that number is obviously going to climb down as we run it a bit further. So the vents on this one point straight out from the aircon, so very efficient. 
the catch with them is when you clean your van, you might shut your vents off. And then you turn your aircon on, you're not getting much cold air. So just make sure that they're open. You can spin them around to point the air wherever you want it to go, either the hot air into your rug boots or the cold air onto your legs at the table playing cards. Entirely up to you. But just keep an eye on them and realise, of course, the ground under your van's either going to be hot or cold as it starts up. So it takes a little while longer to catch up and do its thing. Um, and you can only use it on 240 volt. You can't use it free camping unless you've got a generator. Um, on this model, the cooker is gas and a grill, no oven. Depends what you're going to do with it, whether you want an oven or more storage space. It's always a good idea to fire up the range hood before you start cooking because you'll shake out any travel dust that you've gotten on your travel, strangely enough. And you don't want that on your eggs. Once you've got your fan going, pick which burner you want to use, push it in, click, away you go. If the lid comes down, most models have a cutout. So it's turned your gas off. So you can't accidentally turn your gas on. The thing is, if you're grilling your crumpets and you shut the lid, it turns it off. The other trick is to always check for temperature before you shut the lid. Now that was on for a nanosecond and it's hot. But yeah, check the temperature, make sure you're ready to go. Some people put a tea towel under there just to stop it rattling a bit. Depends on the road you're going on. Um, and yeah, turn off the range hood and then you've got bench top again. Um, the other thing to look at for your van or to find is if you've got a filter tap, find the filter so you know where it is. The other thing to do is locate where your 240 volt power points are that your microwave plugs into, your fridge, which in this van are under the couch. Because if your fridge isn't working on 240 volt one day, but your microwave's on, you might have pulled the power cord, grabbing the whiskey out from under the couch. Your windows, again, get familiar with them. Up is normally night mode. Separate them, because the fly screen's attached to the top. Release all your latches. Some windows will have three, some will have four, some will have five. Push it out, you can twiddle them up to wherever you like, and then still shut your fly screen or your night blind. These windows have little cutouts, so I can cut it there, and a little bit of ventilation, but a little bit of bugs. For travel, make sure you shut them, shut them all, and if you travel with the fly screen down, you can sit in the middle of your van and go locked, 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 and they're done. If you travel with it like that, sure as eggs you'll get somewhere, and that one's moved down, and you'll have a Barney with your partner about who didn't check the windows properly, because this one's in the wrong spot. Um, for storage, because they're magnetic, just split them apart a little bit. Stops the magnets generating their own stickiness, I suppose, because um, they can be hard to get apart if they've been stuck together for a long, long time. Use them, open them up, get the airflow in here, get your fans, get the aircon in, change the temperature, and then deal up your cards on your table. With the tables, make sure you know where your lever is. I guarantee you, you'll lose it a million times. You squeeze the lever, you can do any horizontal manoeuvres, because you might realise that that works better for you playing cards or whatever's going on when you're having dinner time. A lot of these, you can have the option by standing on the button on the floor to lock them in down low, snug them back in, make up another bed. The obvious issue though is you put a cushion straight on there and some kid goes to sleep on it, the cushion slides off, kid's sleeping on the table. So you've got to pull these out and tuck everything in around in a slightly different aspect. Um, a lot of people get these tables just for the disco motion of horizontal because they realise they want it tucked way over here when they're packing their van but when they're having dinner they want it out here and like I say when you've got the canasta deck out you want it that way so one of you sits on the bed and the other one sits here by the fridge. But know where your lever is because you will lose it. If I loosen off this thumb screw down here, slide this out the way. That's the same on nearly every awning in the country. That might be a little bit different. There's a switch up here you need to flick down, which if you're short, there's a hook in the front boot to pull it down. If you've done both of them on both ends and pulled that down, you then locate your strap. Pull it out. These arms will then slide up and they lock over a little pin. You do them up. You do the same on each end. Now, once you've got your arm up, under the handle down here is the locking pin. If your free hand's above, you can slide it out, make sure it locks in. To take any slack out, loosen that off, pull it down a little bit, tighten it up again. Try and get your awning flat. It looks sexier. Mark it in here once you're happy with the height that you always go to, so it's easier for you and your camping buddies to set up your awning nice and flat. 
You can stand your legs up if you're sick of walking through this, which again, you just pull it out, but it's fairly heavy and you've got to be good on your pegs, otherwise it'll end up on your roof. The strap can slide out, so wrap it up around here, or take it out, because otherwise you'll lose it, it makes it hard. If you go for anti-flap kits and the curved rafters, there's saddles and stuff they'll fit on. If you go for walls, it's already set up for most of it. You'll need the anti-flap bar for a canvas wall. A shade wall will just hang off of that. Now, if it's windy already, you need to pack this up. It's much easier to do it when it's not windy, but if it's already windy, you're in all sorts of strife. Loosen this off. So you remember that anything you do, you start and finish with that and bring it down to height. If you're doing this together, it's a lot quicker. Once we're back on the working end, you push that lever, slide it down out of the way. Some of this can be different, but the process is the same. Now, the beauty of a rear door van is you can go all the way to the middle with this, but it's hard work. If I bring it in about a metre, pull on the strap with my left hand, I can flick that switch with my right, and I've taken all the pressure off it. The awning can't get away from me because I've got a hold of it. If I get to about here and realise I've left the hook in the front boot or it's a full-size van and it's a lot taller, I can climb up the step to snug it away. Then you lock it back in and you do up your thumb screw again. So you're finishing with that. The beauty with the pop top is that strap's now in the middle of your door. If you shut your van's roof now, and that strap hits you on the head, this hasn't wound up. You're gonna be in all sorts of strife. So make sure that there's nothing up on the cupboards. Otherwise, bits and pieces will go everywhere. Make sure your latches are all ready to go on the outside. Because we've just packed the awning in, it's gonna wind up and that strap that's in the doorway will disappear. Grab these bars, hopefully closer to the middle, and you start pulling it down. What you wanna do is just crack that one or the back and then move to the other end and pull it fully down. You've cracked the front or the back, then you pull it down. Watch your head, because it's coming down. The back's now down, so I'll just swap to the front and pull that down. If you're doing this together, it looks a lot neater and your roof will always come down a lot flatter and less chance of it creeping forward or back. As you can see, these have all folded in. But if you left a coffee cup up there, you're in a bit of strife. Make sure the door's open you're compressing the air with the door shut, bloody hard work. Now we need to jump outside and lock it all back down. So what we're looking for is that this strap has all but disappeared, which means that's wound up further as we pulled the roof down. If it's still down, that hasn't wound up. Then all you gotta do is put these clips on. But before you do, have a look on your edges, make sure there's no canvas folded out, because then when you squeeze the roof down, you're gonna put a crease in it. So just reach that up, lock it in, do it on the all four corners, do your walk around, check your legs, check your power cords, shut down inside properly, and then you're ready to travel again to the next campsite. It's important when you're packing up the inside of your van that you make sure you've done it all, because it's hard to jump back in when you're driving. So if you have a little checklist, and we give you a nice one, make sure your windows are shut. If you've shut them when you've shut your windows, you know they're shut, but check anyway. Check your cupboards are shut and secure. You haven't left your coffee mugs on the sink. Make sure all your bathroom doors are shut. Shower plugs in, for example. Secure your microwave plate. You don't want that bouncing around. Again, if you've wrapped it up, you only unwrap it when you use it. Before you jump out and get excited about going, assuming that you've done the hookup on the outside, turn your lights off. Or on this van, you can turn the 12 volt power off, which will turn the lights off. Check your fridge. If the car's already attached, it'll be on battery. If it's still showing power, you know somebody hasn't unplugged your van yet. So you've got that crossover of jobs to be looking at. But the main thing would be to check your fridge, then you can hop out and lock your door. Now, in the magic of television, there's a car attached. Whoever's driving, it's their responsibility to make sure all the hookup is done and stuff's working. Don't be afraid to check the work though, because you don't want to get that bit wrong. Make sure all your legs are up. Otherwise, it makes life a lot harder to drive out the caravan park. In this instance, we know we've done inside. As you walk to the back, 
you've checked the fridge, you lock the door. Because this has got a rear camera on it, I can stand here and wave at the driver to say I'm left indicators, right indicators, headlights, brakes, and then the driver knows that everything on the van's done and we're ready to go. It's always worth checking things like the step, because people forget them, and your power cords and water hoses and things you may have left attached. You may have left a towel on the back bumper. So just do a quick walk around. It doesn't take long, but it's peace of mind more than anything else. It's much easier to have an extra minute now than it is as you're leaving the caravan park, somebody hoys you over and says, oh, you know, you're dragging a power cord, mate. If you remember the basics, you'll have a much more enjoyable time and you look like you're a professional at it rather than the amateur who's camped next door to you. Now's also a good chance to have a look up on your roof so you make out you're stretching your hammies because you're looking at the ground level, nothing's on there. You're looking for TV antennas, shower hatches are up. There's a bird's nest you left up there, the frisbees landed, some kid's drone. But yeah, take the time, walk into the neighbour's site and have a stretch. Make sure you look okay. If you've got stuff, check your wheel nuts, check your tyre pressures. Makes you really look like you know what's going on. And then you move on to the next campsite and you do it all over again. So that was a reasonably quick handover on a Goldstream. Um, we go into a bit more detail when you come and pick up your Goldstream, but we need you to be adventure ready at Adelaide RV. So we spend a lot of time going through it. We have a lot of videos and a lot of links through our website. So if there's something specific we haven't covered, you can either have a sneaky look through that or shoot us a quick email or a text or reach out because then we can video what you need us to talk about. You might have a different hot water. Um, you might need to go through the pop top on your specific model. We might have one in the yard we can help out with. The important thing is we're always here if we can make you adventure ready, it means you're having more fun. And if you're having more fun, we're having more fun. Thanks a lot for your time. If you've been watching the whole thing, I know I talk a lot. Wait till you come and meet me in the yard. I look forward to doing more of these videos with Tom. So hit us up. We'll shoot what you need us to shoot. You never know. You might see me at the caravan park and you can get a hands-on experience.